Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather in this moment, we gather in this uh, place, we gather in this communion, indeed to be united in the very body and blood of Christ Jesus, to be united as men and women of charity and faith, to be united in the very gift of the Holy Spirit. That Spirit breathed upon the apostles, so too breathed upon each one of us in holy baptism and sealed within us in the sacrament of confirmation. And so let us stir into flame that gift of the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost day. Alleluia, alleluia. How good it is to sing those words, those words of Easter glory, those words of the resurrection of Christ our Lord and our redemption in him. And so as we come to celebrate this Holy Mass, as our parish churches across the diocese are reopening, that we may rejoice and celebrate in the gift of God's very Spirit. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us enter into this Holy Mass with contrition and humility but also with that very latent joy springing forth. And so we acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And so acknowledging our sins and recognizing our need for God's mercy, we are ever mindful of the mystery of our redemption in Christ Jesus. We are mindful that Christ, by his sacrifice, indeed sets us free from that sin, that separation from Almighty God. And just 50 days ago, we, although separated and isolated for fear, separated because of the restrictions imposed upon us, were not able to be together for the joy and the mystery of the celebration of Easter. On that holy night, Easter Vigil, where the light of Christ broke into our darkness, where the waters of baptism gushed forth anew, and although we are still not able to dip our hands into those holy water fonts, we can nonetheless be sprinkled by that holy water, that water made holy by God's holy word, that water ever blessed, signifying our freedom from original sin. Waters that cleanse, but the graces that penetrate ever more deeply. And so let us be sprinkled with water from that Easter vigil, so that we may recall our baptism, and we may be ever grateful for the gift that was affected and, and wrought for us in Christ Jesus on that Easter night.
God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God in honor. Full of goodwill, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, and mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God in on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the faith of the earth, across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Dear brothers and sisters, on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday, on this day of renewed life in our parishes, and with, joy, with hearts full of joy, we cry out to the Lord, Lord, send out your Spirit. And so, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. That the Lord shows himself and calls out to each one of us. The Lord desires to bring us to himself and desires to give us life. Pentecost Sunday, 50 days rejoicing in, in the glory of Easter, 50 days in the mystery of the resurrection of the Lord, 50 days in seeing the glorified face of the risen Christ. And so we come on this day giving thanks to Almighty God, and all the while crying out to him to send forth his spirit and renew the face of the earth. And what is this face of the earth? It is the very face of God's creation. It's the face of God pouring forth into the world, his very image and likeness, that you and I, persons made of body and soul, are but images and reflections of the glory of God. But like the earth, it can so easily be marred by human indignity like our beautiful creation, we can become irresponsible. And deep wounds are inflicted upon that face of the earth. And still more by sin, crevices and wounds upon ourselves distort that image that you and I are of the Lord our God visible images in the world and upon the earth, called to live in brotherhood and harmony, called to live and exercise dominion upon this earth for charity, for grace, for love. And so we know that marked by that human fault, our own natural frailty, and marked by that very scourge of sin, this earth and our lives are so often but dust, but darkness, brittle and dry. These bones of ours waste away and return unto the earth. And we're marked by those ashes, how we can recall sitting in these very pews those many weeks ago. And we were marked by those ashes as a reminder and a call to penitence, to turn towards the Lord for conversion of heart. And perhaps as we began that season of Lent, we expected it to be like any other in all years past. But the Lord, constantly desiring to bring his people forth and to renew this face, allowed us to enter into the very scourge of the pandemic that we've all endured, whether by ill health in our own selves, our families and communities, or by the fears of society and community that have isolated us, separated us, and even now our faces are still covered. But the Lord comes to renew the face of the earth, to renew the face of his image and likeness that you are, 
to breathe into us new life. And so this Lenten season was truly penetrating and, 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 and troublesome. As we prayed from our own homes, as we aspired to return into this church. And I pray that you took up sacred scripture and offered these penances and these sufferings as a share in the cross of Christ. For after 40 days of Lent since that Ash Wednesday, we followed Christ to his very death. And for fear, we were not there with him at the foot of the cross. For fear, we were apart. For fear, we were hidden. But the Lord, kind and merciful, raised on that third day, came out to meet his disciples. Not to those in authority or power, not to those who exercise their force and might, but to the humble, the faithful, and those who would believe. And he's walked with us, he's been with us, and he's shared with us his very flesh so that we may touch him, we may embrace him, we may receive him. And for 40 days, he was plainly seen by his disciples and many apostles. And then returning to the Lord, that is our Father, Father in heaven, he ascended in heavenly glory. But still that promise remains, I will not leave you orphans. I will send you the Spirit. And that Holy Spirit like rushing wind, like the pillar of smoke guiding the people Israel, like the flames of fire, like the cleansing waters, burst forth upon the disciples and apostles, still gathered behind locked doors for fear. And with that Holy Spirit, they come alive. They break out of their darkness. They break out of their separation, and all peoples of the earth and distant corners of the world come to hear and understand according to their own language. And each of us now are invited to that very life of the Holy Spirit, that we, though many, may be one. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. And so by baptism, we take on the face of Christ. And on this Pentecost day, as for the apostles and disciples centuries ago, so too for us, that Holy Spirit gives life to the body. And you and I, faithful to Christ, following his ways, confessing to him in the very instruments that he offers us in the church, are now one body, one spirit in Christ. And God the Father recognizes the very sacrifice of his beloved Son as our sacrifice that is of our very lives, our charity, our love. God recognizes, despite our weakness, despite our frailty, that we offer an acceptable and living sacrifice because you and I are members of the body of Christ in a powerful and unique way manifest in the sacraments, united with Christ upon the cross who sheds his, his blood and water gushing forth from his side and are breathed and respire his Holy Spirit. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us rejoice on this 31st day of May, on this 50th day of Easter, on this day of our lives 
like any other day, but always knew that we are members of the body of Christ and that that Holy Spirit is alive. Here in Agawam, here in this church, in the churches across the world, and even more so here in our hearts, Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord renews the face of the earth. And God the Father recognizes us as brothers and sisters in Christ, his beloved Son. And so together with all those who are united in faith and desirous of God's grace, let us profess and proclaim what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus had promised to send the spirit of truth, the spirit of consolation, which proceeds from the Father. Let us present with confidence to the Lord our prayers. May the Lord Jesus send forth the spirit, that he may strengthen the unity and love of us, as they may come to recognize his church as the universal sacrament of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord May the Lord Jesus send down his spirit that our Holy Father may be filled with the gifts of wisdom and strength, guiding and confirming his brothers and sisters in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord May the Lord Jesus send out his spirit that all who have been affected by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, including healthcare workers, families, and the infirm, may be inspired with a spirit of confidence and faith as they seek recovery of body and soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those prayers written in our book of remembrance and on our prayer line, for those we have been asked to pray for, especially the sanctification of our families, as well as those we lift up from the depths of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God. For the faith of the party, especially Herbie Matthew, for whom this Mass is being offered, that the spirit of life may abide with them, always, as they come to see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O God, through the intercession of Mary, the seat of wisdom, help us respond to the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, to be a new creation, not conformed to the mentality of this world, but 
renewed in heart and mind, capable of discerning your holy will, and united to the Spirit of God. We ask this through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work with human hands, so become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The humble spirit, which I have received by you, Lord, and my sacrifice in your sight this day, we give you, Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those 
you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Savior, Savior of the world. Savior, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have said. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. your blessed apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints that through the constant intercession of your presence be alive for our frail health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation and betrayal, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, and your servant Francis, our Pope, Mitchell, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people. Graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have suffered before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Son of the God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, through me by this your most holy body, and most of all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh. 
the body of Christ. 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 See the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
the body of Christ. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. What is past our lips as food, O Lord, may you possess in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be healing for eternity.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us rejoice with hearts exultant and eagerness without fear, but courage to face the world, but even more so to reflect through our faith, our works, our very lives, the visible image of the invisible God, to be the body of Christ in the world, indeed to be inspired by his Holy Spirit and sharing it forth like a driving wind. So go out there in your families, in your homes, and stir into flame that gift of the Holy Spirit that you have, endowed by you, by the Lord your God, our Father in heaven. The Lord be with you. I can find it. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.